Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. This is Tesla Change My Life. If you are new here, just type new in the comment below. I would love to meet all of you guys and uh, let me introduce myself though. I am Tesla Change My Life and this space is all about to become a multi-millionaire starting from just $20 a week. The only thing that you really need is discipline and commitment. Remember, it's not how much money you make, but how much money you save and invest. If you enjoy what you see here in my channel, don't forget to smash the like button. And of course, subscribe me to my channel. If you like, drop me also a comment. I would love to see your portfolio. Give me your, I give you my opinion if you want but I'm not an expert and I'm not trying to pretend to be one here on YouTube. I'm only a simple guy that show my journey here in this channel. This is not financial advice. You should consult your financial advice for any decision or how to invest in your money and your portfolio. Currently, my dividend income is $328,000 yearly and this break down to $27,000 a month in passive, passive, passive income. A big shout out to Mumu, my preferred new brokerage account. If you like to join me and uh, you know join me during this journey, you will need a brokerage account. And Mumu is the only brokerage that will give you 15 public trade stock. When you open an account with my link, and the link is in the description below, and pin it on top of my comment. What are you waiting for? Do you remember the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago? And the second best time is today. Open a Momo account with my link and get these free stocks. Get that free money. To opening bid, I'm Yahoo Finance Executive Editor Brian Sazi. Now, let's make some money and get a lot smarter. Cool guest uh, on the show today. Here with me now is Tesla investor Alexandra Mers, better known as Tesla Boomer Mama on X. Are you st are you in the Kathy Wood camp? I think Kathy came out, uh, friend of Yahoo Finance, frequent guest, always enjoy talking to her, but she came out recently, $2,600 price target on Tesla by 2029. Uh, what do you think about that one? Uh, guys, uh, this is my reaction video to actually this video was almost like two weeks ago. It's it's not new, but um, again, this is uh, um, to explain to you guys why I'm invest in Tesla and in Tesla. I open also a small uh, um, position in TSLP. Uh, all con all connected to Tesla. I really believe that there's a disconnection from the Tesla um, from the Tesla evaluation from this expert. Uh, this expert they think that the Tesla is a car company. And this create an opportunity guys. Why? Because these people are crazy man. <laughs> Tesla is not a car company. It's a robot company. It's an AI company. Is an energy company. So, guys, uh, Buffett, Warner Buffett, was saying every time that you know, and this resonated with me because uh, he, he said, uh, I mean, one time he said that uh, you don't need a thousand company, you don't need, uh, you don't need this uh, million investment, you know, because your your capital you have like a, a, a you have like a, a budget right let's say that we want to invest this twenty dollars a week all right and you have just twenty dollars right now let's see that you want to put in a hundred company right? what will be it will be like two cents right but if you put twenty dollars in one stock and you concentrate your energy in one stock is where the magic happen, right? So let me tell you this, right? Uh, this is like every time an example, like a Subway, right? Subway uh, concentrate their energy in five, in full foot longs, five dollars foot longs, right? The only thing that they were doing before they decided to sell other, other stuff, it was foot long sandwiches. And they become this big giant, right? 
Now it's a little bit turmoil for them too. But my, th my thing is that good things happen when you concentrate your energy. Like for example, thinking about the sunlight, right? The sunlight, you know, you go on, on the sunlight and, you know, it's beautiful and you can get a little tint, you get a little be nice, you know, nice skin, right? But what about if you concentrate that light in one point, like a laser? You will have the destructive power of a concentration, of a focus, you know, just one thing, right? Now, and this is what I invite you guys to think here about. Concentrate your capital, you know, you have just so much money. You cannot invest in many companies. You need to recognize which company will give you the best return, right? And the best return for me, I think it is Tesla. And of course, we are, I, I am, I'm an high yield, high yield investor as well, right? So I invest in Tesla. Now, uh, forget about that, uh, you know, now there's a group in, uh, in Yield Max, you know, they change a little bit their, um, you know, philosophy now. They will pay, the first group where Tesla is will pay the first week of each month. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. So, concentrate. Recognize which company you really want to invest your hard work money, right? And Tesla, I think it is undervalued. Now, if we invest our capital in Tesla, most likely we will get a great return. But let's continue with this video. Let's see what um, what they say, right? Um, it's a very reasonable price target. Mine is actually higher, not that I am doing as much uh, extensive research as they do. Um, when Cathy Wood and the ARC team came up with that price, they have not included Optimus. And we will actually see Optimus ready. Optimus, the, the humanoid boy, uh, bot that, that, um, Tesla will start selling to third parties end of 2025. And for me, that is the biggest opportunity of all the Tesla opportunities out there. So if you consider like Cathy that just cars full self driving and energy bring you to 2,600 and five years, you should include the bot and you'll get completely different numbers. So what's what's your price target then? Well, I'm very convinced that this goes in the 5,000s or 10,000s once people understand uh, what Tesla is all about. Tesla currently is still looked as a car maker. Tesla is anything but. I mean, these are robots on wheel to your question. It is um, clear that when people have not used Tesla and certainly not used FSD. It is very complicated to understand what a robot on wheel actually is. And they then focus on any car. All right, guys. <laughs> I smile inside and out. Why? Because thinking about, guys, I have a, a I have almost like 1500 actually sharing Tesla, you know, at $10,000 each. That is 10 million, guys. And again, guys, it's no, it's no late to also for you to, you know, maybe if you want to consider to to get some as well. If you consider to get one, again, it's your opinion. But uh, you know, I got all this share in Tesla because Alexandra here just she said ten thousand dollar each stock, and I believe it. I mean, I believe that it will be in such a way because people, I mean, because like the analysts and because the expert, they consider this company as a car company, like GM, like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Ford and this is Tesla. It's not that, it's not that at all, right? So guys, thinking about $10,000 for each share that you will, you will buy today at $200, right? 200, 220, 2060, whatever. But ten thousand dollar man, oh oh boy, let's see what she say. Oh, and again, then he evaluated the robot. You see, there's every time like a mis evaluation on the on the company. You know, Tesla, it's it's labeled as a car company, but they do humanoid robot. They do like energy storage. They do like solar panel. They do battery. They do mega pack. Um, you know, and now there is like the semi, you know, like this big electric truck. They just opened this huge 
huge they start, they're actually working on it um huge um, uh, comp uh, huge uh, uh, new facility for the same eye and what about xai xai will be another giant sleeping giant but again i'm with alexander man our metrics that we know because typical analysts will look at GM or will look at Ford and try to compare or Toyota or whatever it is. And, and that's just not it. That is like comparing the old style phones with today's Apple smartphone or, or, or Samsung smartphone. So the, the, the comparison is just so different. But what is even more astonishing to people who have not experienced it is how actually this car experience, this car full self-driving technology is the root for so much more. By understanding how you can visually digest whatever is out there and make the car move in consequence, you actually understand so much more than anything else. Because there's nothing else comparable where people have mastered vision to action. And um, and so, you know, it it is amazing to talk about, it's amazing to think about it from on a day-to-day -day basis, what this is possible. But what people often ignore is how this is actually now just one puzzle piece to this bot that's going to come up, because there again, you will have vision of the bot then acting uh, on behalf of the bot, doing services, doing labor, doing services for, for you know, people at home, for whatever else uh, can be made. Now, guys, I don't know if you ever ever tried the FSD, the full self-driving of Tesla, you know. I have three Tesla, I have a Model 3, I have a Model Y, and now I have a Cybertruck. And the only one that have like a full self-driving right now is the Model Y, right? And uh, it's like uh, it's like a magic, guys. You put like a if you haven't if you haven't tried Tesla FSD, guys, go to try. It's a free it's a free tryout. You can go to Tesla. You can just set up an appointment, and uh, that will show you the FSD uh, uh, the full self driving. At one point, the guy will tell you, "Sir, you can take off your hand from the wheel, right?" And at one point, the car just will follow the direction. If somebody jump in the front of you or somebody cut you off, the car all, all will slow down or will go around. It's just like super, it's like magic, like for real, like no joking. So this is the thing that the mis-evaluation of Tesla's today. You know, they think that it's a car company, ma. The FSD make this uh, this not a car, but make this as like a co uh, a robot on wheel, right? Now, Tina, but now they're working on the humanoid robot, right? The concept in which way the AI is getting training, it's similar because like in the house, I said that it's a humanoid robot that will be deployed in your house, right? It's the same thing at the car, right? Why? Because the car have wheels. The robot will have legs, right? It's the same motion. The robot will go from point A to point B. Now, in a, in a car world, there is like a, a other car that jump in the front of you or cut you off. They want to, you know, speed over speed. In the house, there is a broom on the floor. There is like a, there is a task, you know, from uh, you need to go from the living room to the bathroom. And uh, over there, you need to avoid all the obstacles. It's the same concept, guys. They will just transplant the brain from the car and they will put it in the robot. So this is uh, what is the misevaluation, guys. And this will be huge. And let's not even talking about the 1010 when will be um, Elon Musk will reveal the robot taxi, where actually this network of of autonomous car can pick you up as Uber does, but without a driver, just the car with the neural net that they are developing. They are developing this system where with the artificial intelligence where the car will just pick you up from uh, in the front of your house or in the front or wherever you are pointing you know there's an app you just click the, on the app where you are and the car will come to pick you up <sighs> guys this is just an amazing time to invest i think and uh, but let's continue to see <laughs> what alexander here is talking about. i i want to get back to the humanoid robot it's a, it's optimus uh it's a topic that i actually uh, i really enjoy covering because i am fascinated by these robots but you recently had a really it was like a day or two ago, a cool thread on your uh, X account looking at or just talking about if Tesla's still selling cars, 
to, mm-hmm. I guess, or, or just selling cars, I guess, through their dealer network over time. I mean, do you see a day where Tesla is no longer doing that and they are just operating a, a robo-taxi fleet? I do. And I'm in the minority for that. I actually ran a poll. You're right. Thank you for going on Mike's account. Um, I ran a poll asking my 135,000 followers and anybody else who saw the poll um, whether they could imagine that at one point Tesla would not sell cars to the retail customer. Not a good thing just to, to also insert that. Uh, Tesla doesn't have a dealer network. Tesla sells directly to the customer, which is much more cost efficient. Uh, no bad purchasing experience where you're for half a day stuck in a dealership doesn't exist. You do all your ordering online and then you go and pick up your car. Uh, but anyway, so will there be a moment 10 years and 15 and 20 years um, where Tesla where it won't make sense anymore to sell cars to the consumer, but rather use those cars um, for the fleet, for the Tesla owned fleet, which uh, as robo taxis will serve um, people all over the world, but initially obviously in the United States, probably China uh, and very soon Europe. Um, and then, um, you know, has such a yield on those cars of incoming recurring income rather than selling it up front. You have to understand a car makes between five and $10,000 of uh, profit the moment you sell it. So you have one moment where you are getting profit. If you're running it as a robo taxi, you obviously have a recurring profit, which is much, much higher. There you're getting into the 80 to 90% uh, profit margin. And if you can um, use that car for 10 years, why would you sell it? Why would you give away the tool that makes you the, the, the highest margins? Realistically, what do you think Tesla will unveil on, what is it? So guys, I don't know if you understand what she's trying to say here, you know, basically, let me clarify a little bit. She's saying that at one point, this, is, this business will be so lucrative, Tesla will make so much money that they will not even sell the card anymore. They will just sell like the subscription to the to the software, the full self-driving software, and that will just like create this network of robo taxi that go around the town, around the city, uh, not just in America but in China, in Europe, all around the world to pick up people. <laughs> so the business, the business of uh, you know the Uber business, but with the robo taxi, with Tesla robo taxi, will be so lucrative that they will not sell car anymore. <laughs> Damn. October 10th, of course, the Robo Taxi Day got moved. And then I, I'm sure obviously it'll be something Robo Taxi related, but do you think Tesla will also unveil a new model at the event? They will re- um, reveal a car. But let me just first get to uh, the dates. So it was initially scheduled for. 8, 8, August 8th, so in three days. It was pushed out for further improvement of the car they're going to present uh, to 10, 10. So 8, 8, 10, 10. Today we're August the 5th, 66 days. So if you believe in good luck, all nice numbers, right? Um, and uh, so the the what will they show? They will show, in my view, the very well advanced prototype of what is called the cyber cap. Uh, in my view, I have no other insights. Um, is this going to be a two seater? Because the most use of an Uber today is for, um, one or two people. There are hardly more people. So there's no need to make a cap, a bigger, a bigger version. At the moment, they may also hint at a future cyber van for bigger groups to to use. So yes, I do believe they will show a car. I also believe they will actually show how this will become a business model, um, meaning you know who can participate in this robo taxi business model, who will earn how much money, how will it function, how does the app look like, where is it going to start, is it going to start in the United States in certain cities because there are licenses to be obtained, what does it mean for insurance, who is now insuring these these cars. So I, I expect most of those answers by then. Yeah, we had initially a BMW i3 um, and then uh, a Bolt. Why do we, we have a GM Bolt? Because in 2017, we wanted to have the Model 3. We were on the waiting list for that, but they had production hell, then couldn't get it. So we needed a car and uh, we got a three-year lease on the Bolt. That three-year lease came up in 2020 just 
pre-COVID. And uh, we test drove the Model 3 on a Tuesday afternoon. It's funny, I remember it, you know, very clearly. It was it was such an experience. So I was coming from an EV experience. I knew what EVs was like to drive. I had, I knew the talk they had. So it wasn't really about the the drive experience, albeit it was much better, but it was this understanding how the car was actually a computer, a computer on wheels, how the whole infrastructure worked together. Uh, you had this beautiful screen, how the, the road was displayed, how you could drive. And then obviously at that moment, it's still very early version of, of FSD. So when we t test drove that on a Tuesday afternoon, I came back to, to my house and I said to my husband, you know what? We're going all in. And you have to, add, you have to know I was a fund manager in my life long time ago, 20, 20 something years ago. Um, so I was brought up with all these diversification rules, 5%, 10%, don't do this, don't do that. So this was the first time in my life where I felt like I have discovered something that will profoundly change. And I only knew so little about it, right? So the, the Tuesday afternoon, we took that decision. All our liquid assets that we had in other stock and in funds and whatever were liquidated on that Wednesday morning. Now, good for us. It was the dip. It was the March dip. <clears throat> excuse me. The March dip of um, pre-COVID. Yep. So um, we got it all at a good price. Um, and then obviously whatever happens with... Uh, people like me who take decisions sometimes a bit too quickly, you sort of question yourself, did, did I do the right thing? And so I started researching and, and like I said, I was a financial analyst and fund manager before. So I started digging into the stock and more I, I learned, more I loved it. And uh, so it, I had my confirmation bias on and again and on and again. And by now, it became clear it was not only a car company, it was an energy company. And it was um, this whole tech company that was going to bring us full self-drive, but it was also going to bring us this whole real-life AI, meaning we're going way beyond the language models where you have uh, a sequence of words following each other and the probability of the next word being this word and yet then making it beautiful sense, right? Um, but which is also only based on the data input you give these language models. Now here you have suddenly real AI where these millions of cars, now close to 7 million cars, are collecting constantly visual input, a data that nobody else has, and digests it in a way to action the car and, and sooner or later the bot. And, and you have the energy solution with it. So more I went into it, more I understood, you know, how absolutely genius it was to bring all these pieces together mm -hmm. and with which un infrastructure this will be. Now, it, it doesn't come without emotions. I mean, I, I as a, any Tesla investor knows, we have our ups and downs because while we see the long-term vision, obviously the day-to-day -day stock price can be fluctuating and complicated. But once you've seen this, you know, this vision and understand where we are going and how there's nobody there. Nobody else has this real life AI mastered by having the data input and having the capacity and now soon data centers are just incomparable to anybody else's. I mean, we, it doesn't even compare to what Google or Meta or whoever else are out there. So I know, I know I'm going on and on, no, but the thing but, is, it but is you're, just so incredible. But you are bringing up a key point about the cars. So a couple months ago, I had the good fortune. I spent the day with General Motors CEO Mary Barrett. And we got to tour uh, their electric vehicle manufacturing plan. I got to watch the new Lyric being built from Cali. Cool stuff. Uh, the EV Blazer. And, I'm, I, and I came away thinking, Alexandra, I'm like, wow, these are real cars that GM is, is making, real EVs. Yeah. I mean, the data's kind of cool. These things look pretty neat. I mean, do you worry that as more of the big three scale up their production, that they take market share from Tesla? Yes. Um, I hope for every EV that comes on the market. I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I also love a lot about Rivian. The thing is, those are cars. Those are EV cars. They are not computers on wheels. The, the software is just not comparable and the vision is not comparable and it is not going where I think Tesla is going. What you have to understand, and I think I, I best explain it with the bots rather than the cars because it's the same model. There will be lots of people producing bots, but it is one thing 
to have a good idea for a bot than having a prototype. It's a completely other thing, building it profitably at scale. And so that's the same issue we have with EVs. For years now, these companies, these OEMs, have been paying horrendous rec credits to, to Tesla. Tesla has by now $9 billion of uh, rec credits from these OEMs because they cannot build the EVs. So they rather pay the penalty to Tesla than losing a lot of money on each EV they are producing. Now, I wish them all the best to, you know, get there uh, because we should have more EVs on the roads. They're the best type of cars and people when once they discover it mm-hmm. will you know bridge this but it is it is clearly not uh, the same vision of full self drive tesla is not about cars so gm is not our competitor mm-hmm. it, there is actually no competitor outside uh, 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 out there for, for Tesla, other than some Chinese who have the same software vision. And, and that brings me actually to a subject I would really like to give you give me a minute, which is I think Tesla is in the wrong bucket at the stock exchange. Everybody considers Tesla a consumer discretionary stock. It should be in the tech bucket and it will eventually move in the tech bucket because as you know, S&P and MSCI, they decide once per year in which bucket a stock should be. And, and, uh, and I'm sure in two, three, four years, years, they will finally understand it because both income and revenue from Tesla will not come from cars, will come from software and uh, and, in, and energy, that's for sure, but it's not there. And the move from one bucket to the other means that the ETFs investing currently in consumer discretionary and the ones that are investing in tech are about eight times the size. So that is going to be a seismic shift when Tesla moves a bucket, which is overdue. You know, st- we have a couple minutes left, uh, Alexander. Let me see if I get a couple more. And one, you know, I did want to touch on uh, former President Trump has been out there on the campaign trail. He has made it known he is not a fan of, of, of EVs. Now, he came out recently and said he may be a little more open to EVs because Elon is supporting him. So what if the former president wins four more years in the White House, pulls that $7,500 tax credit? What impact does that have to Tesla in your view? Um, first of all, Tesla doesn't need those credits. It's nice to have, but they don't. They are the most profitable, the only profitable EVs out there, and they sell even without that credit. This is going to be difficult for competitors of Tesla, but not for Tesla. The second thing is President Trump wants to win Michigan. He needs Michigan, and I hear him loud and clear. Um, I hope Elon reaches out to him and teaches him some lessons because some of the stuff he says is not appropriate. It's just incorrect. And, uh, you know, we'll see how the election goes. But I actually think Tesla is going to be the winner no matter who the president of the United States is going to be starting in November. And no one, nothing lasts forever. Have you thought about life after Elon and what that might mean the company stock price? Um, yes, that is difficult. That's a difficult question because he is clearly the key man. And we have fought very, very hard this year to win the shareholder the shareholder vote in June because we wanted to make sure he stays motivated and focused, and he is. Um, so yes, the, it is difficult. Um, there is obviously a succession plan now in place. Three, four years ago, that seemed a little bit more unknown. Um, but we hope to have him there as long as possible. What does it mean for the stock price? Well, it depends when it is. If it would come in the near future, it probably would be damaging to the stock price for quite a while. And it would be a shame because I just don't think that um, without Elon, the, the company would get to their goal um, as quickly as with him. So I hope he's still there for a long time to come. Have you ever met Elon or talked to him? No. <laughs> Sorry, no, I did not. I wish I can one day. Um, I had a short interaction with him, but not not spoke to him at the shareholder meeting because I was so vocal getting that vote in that um, one of the people at the end of the of the shareholder meeting um, called me out and he bowed to me and uh, he sent me a thumbs up. So I like that, but no, I never spoke to him. And one minute left, Alexandra. If you had to, if Elon was sitting right next to you. What's the one thing you would tell them that you would like to see from Tesla? Keep on going. Don't leave us.
<laughs> Alexandra Murs, this has been a really fascinating uh, discussion. We'll have to have you back because I do want to talk a little bit more about the humanoid robot. But next time, indeed, uh, Tesla investor Alexandra Murs, better known as Tesla Boomer. Ma so, guys, this that's it. This is a wrap of this video. As you guys understand, um, I don't know. I don't know how people don't see this. I don't, so I don't see how analysts don't see this. But these are good things, guys. These are great things because we can jump in and, and buy this stock at a relatively cheap price. Because still at twenty dollars a share. But Tesla, TSLP, they are even cheaper. Uh, they are like fifteen, twenty, whatever it is. Uh, actually, um, I'm not really sure how much it is Tesla uh, today. I'm recording this on a weekend, uh, but let me check very fast. Let me check how much Tesla is right now. So if I check my um, my my uh, account, Tesla is two two hundred thirty dollars, and if I go in Tesla, it's thirteen dollars, guys. Thirteen dollars. Um, Guys, uh, this is just phenomena. I don't know how, you know, of course, this is not financial advice, but Tesla, Tesla, TSLP, uh, I don't know, it's a no-brainer thing, guys, especially you get the growth, um, the growth side of the, of your investment with Tesla. Plus, if you buy Tesla, you will have also the just dividend uh, monthly. And, uh, but guys, this is a wrap. This video has already been uh, already too long. I want to just let um, guys. I want to just like give a little comment on my um, a little opinion on this uh, on this uh, video that I saw it, and um, get you the news, guys. Before ten ten, guys, ten ten. Remember that will be one of the day that will change history. Um, will be a robot taxi reveal from Tesla and Elon Musk. But guys. This is a wrap for today. Um, thank you so much for following me. Uh, don't forget to, you know, smash the like button, guys. We'll up the algorithm of YouTube and we'll have this video show to many other uh, people just like me and you. But guys, thank you so much for following me. And uh, this is a wrap. I will see you on the next one. Ciao.